Hello and welcome to Coffee with Carrie. I appreciate you stopping by today and you must have seen the title. Today I wanted to share an all drugstore makeup look with you. This is what I ended up with and I hope that if you watch the video, if this is interesting, that you will find something helpful or learn about a new product. I will list them all down below. Today, no dating advice, nothing about food, just straight up makeup. And what typically takes me about 15 minutes, I'm going to recreate for you here just using drugstore brands. So if you find this interesting, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see how I ended up looking like this, instead of what you're gonna see right now, just keep on watching. I started this makeup tutorial without you, but I wanna catch you up to speed. In fact, I actually started it with you, but then my battery ran out and I needed to start all over. So catching you up, I started with some moisturizer. It's getting a little dry. It's getting a little cool outside here in the Chicago area. So I did put some moisturizer on right after washing my face earlier today. I like that uh, Neutrogena Hydra Boost, that's what it's called. It's very lightweight. I do that during the day. At night, I slather on much thicker creams, a CeraVe that I really, really love, and I can link that for you down below as well. But right now, before putting on my makeup, I used this Argan Oil from Physicians Formula. Looks like this. And I smoothed that all over my face and down my neck. The next thing I did was I used Flower Beauty's Light Illusion in the color <laughs> Natural Beige M1, and that is this. I took one full pump of it and then proceeded to dot it on all the important parts of my face. I blended it with this little Morphe brush. And then the next step was, because I'm trying to show you all these drugstore options, I had this contour stick from Wet n Wild. Call Me Maple number 805. I applied that right under my cheekbones here, right where you can feel the bottom of my cheekbone, a little tiny, tiny line, and I used uh, a brush, I used this brush actually, just to blend it upward and back. Then I went over the contour cream with something powder in order to make it stay put. And I used the butter bronzer from Physicians Formula with this brush. And I like this brush because it's got a little angle to it and I am able to just kind of tuck it underneath there. I then pulled it down my neck, wrapped it around here, and then around my jawline. And that's where I left off, blush. I was going to show you a couple blush options. And this one is from Flower Beauty. I like this. If we decide to go with a peach color, this is Peach Primrose. This one from Burt Bees is called Bear Peach. Not super pigmented, but that's nice sometimes because you can use a little bit more, start with less, add as you go along, which is always nice. I did bring another bronzer option into the studio to show you, and it's this little bronzer palette from e.l.f. I like these because they go range between warm and cool. I'm gonna use the cooler tone there. Now, I don't take my bronzer up onto my temples, which is right here, and I'll tell you why. As we get a little bit older, that area seems to sink in a little bit. In fact, I will more likely use a highlighter there. I have this one called Hello Halo from Wet n Wild. Halo Goodbye. You say hello and I say goodbye. Dull looking skin. <laughs> so I tend to just put a little bit of that. I just need a little tiny dot. Um, use my fingers to give a little bit of reflection there in that area that it might trick the eye into thinking that area is a little bit wider and not quite sinking in the way it is starting to. Everything will have to be set with powder because that, as you can see, was a liquid. And we left off with blush and I think I'm going to go with 
Let's start light and we can build it up, in which case I'm going to use this one from Burt Bees that I was talking about. I'm going to use this kind of a brush for more of a stamping motion. This is a real techniques brush. And I'm going to go right above where I put that bronzer on, which would be, it'll be on top of some of the bronzer, but higher than the bronzer. And I think as we get a little bit older, it's important to stay high with the blush. Not to go down here too far and not to bring that bronzer down close to the mouth. It's like serves as a little lift here. So that will get us started at the end. If we need more blush, we can do that. And then we are going to do our concealer. Now that we got a little color going, and I use a couple different ones. This Age Rewind from Maybelline, and I like to use that to put in the corner of my eyes where I have dark shadows. Oh, this is the light, and I like to go right in there to get rid of that darkness. Put some of it, we're not. There it is, I found it. We can do a little bit there to lighten up the center of the face and find a brush to blend that edges of that. Move that since we're there. And then I like to use a different concealer under my eyes for those dark circles. I didn't do any color correcting today, which I did show you with those color correctors. Um, there's a video to that. I'll put the link up there in case you're interested in playing. This is the 12 hour liquid camouflage from Catrice and I really like the consistency of this for my dark circles. And then I really love this brush, which is a Stila brush number 33. And what I like is it's shaped like a fingertip. So you can really get right in there, go around in any discoloration at the corner of my eye. And then I take that right up into that area that my temple, which I say is a little bit sinky. So, we're not there, come around and up into here. The leftover, probably just cover up a little bit of the pink on my eyelid and use that as a primer. And now my other, this is why it takes me all these concealers because then there's another one that I like to use to cover discoloration and the pinkness around my nose. And for that, I always look for something that is a little bit thicker in consistency, long wearing, and is my flesh color as opposed to being a little bit lighter, which I was using to lighten the corners and brighten up this area of my face. But I don't have it, so I'm gonna take my NARS, which is uh, my Radiant Creamy Concealer, and the NARS Radiant Concealer is in the color Ginger. Not using it under my eyes, but I wanna put it right here and there. And then I will take my concealer brush just to drag it along into my wrinkles. I just want to back up a little bit because I mentioned the moisturizer that I used before we got started. And this is the Neutrogena Hydra Boost Gel Cream with hyaluronic acid. And then this is what I use every day before I put my makeup on if I'm just looking for something a little lighter. I also mentioned that I use something a little bit richer at night. And I also use this as an eye cream and actually a lip cream before putting makeup on. Going to move on to eyeshadows. And I have this one from e.l.f. since we are doing drugstore that I like. And it's called, it says Mad for Matte on the back. And it has some cool tones and warm tones in there. And we don't know what I'm gonna use yet, but I've brought a few brushes with me here to do the work. I'm gonna take a wash of color in this lightest beigey color, not the pink, but this lightest one at the end. And I'm gonna use that all over my lid and into my crease. I think they call this a transition color. Actually, it's light enough. I'm gonna even bring it up onto my brow bone. Haven't done my brows yet. Don't make fun of them. The next color, I'm gonna take a brush that is a little bit fluffier and it's going to be this Morphe M514 
and I'm going into this third camel color, I would say it is, not too dark, the medium brown in here. And I am going to apply that right in my crease. At the edge, I'm not going to bring it down into below the center of my eye here. I'm gonna bring it upward. Do the other eye. Tap off the extra. Hmm. A little more. Upward. I'm going to take an angled brush right now that's a little bit thinner so I don't take up so much space under my eye, but I'm going to use that same camel color and apply it under my lashes from the co outside corner where the lashes stop basically because I want it to look more like a shadow under my lashes. And this is a good shadow color of shadow. And I'm attaching it now to the shadow on my upper lid at the very corner there. Next up, I'm going to take an even deeper tone. Actually, I'm taking a little bit of the one that's a little bit warmer that's right next to it and putting both of them on the brush together. And that I'm going to put right into, pat it right into this area here, my crease at the outer third of my eye. And bring it down a little bit right here and then drag it down to my lashes. And actually that color I think I'm gonna take also and put really close to my lashes on the bottom. All right, now let's just brush away the excess. This one will do now that I cleaned it off because I want to blend all of this together. Taking my concealer here and kind of getting rid of anything I don't want that went beyond that line that I wanted that did that. I like everything to sort of blend together and be seamless. And what I found really helps with that is powdering it with something that has like a little bit of reflection. And what I like from the drugstore is this Milani Prep Set and Glow. And this is in the color 02 and it looks like this doesn't have any color except a little bit of sheen and I use a very very big you can see how big this is compared to my face a big fluffy brush this one is a Sonia Kashuk you can see I don't even it doesn't even have a lot of dust that flies away and then what I like to do is very gently because I don't want to move everything I like to make it all look seamless I may need some more blush after I'm done with this and that's fine The Flower Beauty um, Peach Primrose looked really pretty to me with what I seemed to be going for today. So let's go back with that. Ooh, look, see how much more pigment that has than the last one? It's all right. What I like to do, and I don't have it here right now, is right. I, I don't smile when I put on my blush. I like to keep a flat face, <laughs> as it were, and just keep it high right on top of that cheekbone like this and not come too far forward to where the apples of my cheeks are anymore because as you can see my apples are here but when I'm not smiling they're down here and it's starting to get a little too close to my mouth as things shift around but I do like to take a pink color and apply a little bit of that rosiness right here right on the apples doesn't matter I don't bl even barely blend it in it's something soft just a really soft baby pink color right here I can show you a couple of them um, next time and then typically I'll take that right across the bridge of my nose to 
tie it together and make it look like it's a blush color. All right, I'm gonna go back to that powder to with the big fluffy brush to blend that blush a little bit more with the powder. So if we're keeping things simple on the eyebrow front, I just use an old, I think this is a baby toothbrush that I had. I don't know what. I don't even know how it got here. And then I'm going to use this from Makeup Revolution. It is a little brow kit called Focus and Fix Brow Shaping Kit, and this is in the shade Medium Dark. I'm going to take a little bit of the lightest color here on my little tiny angled brush that I have. It's a MAC brush. I like it because it's very short bristled, very fine little line, and it's short. There are some that are a little bit longer. They have a little bit more flexibility. This one's rather stiff. And then I start right at my arch and make a line from that arch towards the tip. So it's a kind of a straight line. And then another one from the middle of my first half of my brow to that arch. And that's going to be the shape of my brow. I'm going to do the other one. See, this one's a little bit harder to see where the high point is. There we go. And the top. And that's going to be the shape of that brow. Then I take the, make sure it's the lightest color and not right at the, where my brow starts, but a tiny bit in. I wanna fill in that bottom, right, to clean up that line. To the bottom of the arch. Then I'm gonna brush through that with my little toothbrush. I'm gonna brush that part down so it blends it into lower. I'm gonna blend that part up. And then a little bit with the lightest color, I'm going to fill in some of my bare spots. A little bare right there. And then a tiny bit with my little brow brush, kind of in that direction, not sideways, but upright. I'm gonna just draw in a couple little. This could be done with a pencil, but that's it for the brows. A couple final steps here are I take a little pointed pencil brush into this little Wet n Wild Trio. Looks like that. It's called Color Con Trio and it's uh, the name of the palette is Walking on Eggshells and I'm going to take this white color mixed with a little bit of the pinky beige and put it right at my inner corner where I have a dark shadow right there because I have deep set eyes and make that pop a little bit and not look like it's receding into a black hole. <laughs> Finally, we're going to finish up with some lining of my eyes. I have a couple options for you from the drugstores of black pencils that I really like. This one is from NYX and it is just called Jet Black. It's a slide on extreme and that can be used inside the waterline. Other choice would be this one from Rimmel, 001 Black. I'll show you where I'm going to be doing it and then I'll finish it off so you don't have to stare at my eyeballs. I'm going to lift up my uh, lid a little bit so I can see that inner rim. And then right in between the eyelashes and on that rim, I'm going to make a line with this black. Now the trick after you get this line in here is to not blink until it dries because it is waterproof but it will move if I blink my eyes and I'll get it on my bottom waterline as well. While so, I'm doing that, I wanted to point out that I do have a, a, a liner here that's not in pencil form. This is from e.l.f. and it is called Intense Ink Eyeliner in Blackest Black. And since I have it here, I think I will draw just a small line on my upper eyelid. Actually, I don't need that. I'm just going to Go close. I'm doing this pretty much blind, but it's a really nice point and I'm not winging or anything. I'm just going right along my lashes for the faintest little black thin skinny line just using the point. Not extending beyond anything. And with my liner dried, I should probably go ahead and add some mascara. I'm going to use this Maybelline Lash Sensational. It's the one in the mauve pink tube. Get the excess off the end because where I want to use this is just on my bottom lashes. 
It's got a really small brush that seems to hug that lash line on the bottom. Just give a little definition to those so they're not invisible. Last up would be mascara, and my choices from the drugstore would be a few. That was drugstore for my bottom lashes. I like Maybelline's Total Temptation, which looks like this. And also from Ulta, and I know some CVS's carry Essence. I like Lash Princess, which is False Lash Effect, and I think I'm gonna go with that. It's got a straight brush, getting any excess off the tip. And I'm gonna coat those top lashes from the base. Actually, I gotta remember my own tips. The mirror should be below you so that you don't bump into your top lid. One coat done. Sometimes I mix and match for different effects from my mascaras, but today I'm just gonna go with the the false lash effect from Essence. Don't pump your mascara in the tube. That just introduces bacteria from the air and dries out your mascara more quickly because you're introducing oxygen. However, when you are putting it in the tube, turn it, push it sideways so you're grabbing the product from inside the tube. You'll get more on your brush. Actually, sometimes I like to I know it's not good, but I will pull my, so I can get into that, outer, that inner corner a little more easily without bumping into stuff. And then finally, before we complete this, in order to complete this, I have chosen to use my L'Oreal Infallible Makeup Extender as my finishing spray. Try not to get your mascara since it's still kind of damp here and you'll be just wetting that, but You can use a sponge if you have one handy. But let's just take it off the center here where it's likely to leave little spots. And that'll do it. That is all our drugstore products that we're using to do this look today. I hope you found that maybe helpful in some way and or I turned you onto a product that I like that you're not using currently. Let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks for stopping by. I certainly appreciate you coming by and seeing what I wanted to talk about today. I'll look forward to the next time. Thanks and have a good one.